Hi, um, my name is Serene Ong and I'm a research fellow at the Centre for Biomedical Ethics at the National University of Singapore. I'll be presenting a module on ethical issues in genetic testing and this module is split into three parts. The first part covers a brief introduction to genetic testing. The second part examines the familial implications of genetic testing. And the third part examines a case. In this video, we start by broadly looking at what genetic testing is, when it might be indicated, and when it might be not. For centuries, people have recognized the hereditary nature of, of diseases. For instance, historical writings dating back to the 2nd century AD warn of abnormal bleeding, likely indicating conditions like hemophilia. It wasn't until the 19th century that hemophilia was systematically studied and classified as a hereditary disorder. Today, advancements in treatment such as clotting factor concentrates have greatly improved the quality of life for individuals with this condition. However, the development of DNA-based diagnostic methods for hereditary diseases is a more recent advancement. The groundwork for genetic testing was laid in the late 19th and early 20th centuries with discoveries such as Mendel's loss of inheritance and then Steiner's identification of blood types. Genetic testing, however, essentially began in the 1950s when advancements in cyto cytogenics led to techniques such as karyotyping for visualizing chromosomal abnormality, abnormalities. Another significant milestone was the elucidation of the double helix structure of DNA in 1953 by Watson, Crick and Franklin, which, led the, which laid down the foundation for molecular genetics. This paved the way for innovations like polymerase chain reaction in the 1980s enabling precise amplification and analysis of specific DNA sequences. The completion of the Human Genome Project in 2003 was another milestone um, and led to the development of new genetic tests capable of identifying disease-causing mutations, pre predicting individual susceptibility to certain diseases, and guiding personalized treatment strategies. But sequencing the genome was expensive. Developed in the 1970s, Sanger sequencing was accurate, but really expensive and labor-intensive. The Human Genome Project, which used a combination of Sanger sequencing and other sequencing technologies, was estimated to have cost approximately $2.7 billion to sequence the entire human genome. The high cost of Sanger sequencing limited its widespread adoption for large-scale genomic studies and clinical applications. The development of next-generation sequencing technologies in the mid-2000s changed that. Now, the cost to sequence a human genome ranged from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars, depending on the sequencing platform, depth of coverage, and analysis required. The decreasing cost of genome sequencing has democratized access to genomic information and has facilitated widespread use in research, clinical diagnostics, and precision medicine. Currently, there are thousands of clinical genetic tests available for various diagnostic, prognostic, and predictive purposes. Because of the widespread scope of genetic testing, this series of videos will focus on genetic tests carried out in a clinic. The ubiquity of genetic testing has led to a raft of benefits, but also raised questions regarding the ethical, legal, and social implications. A genetic condition or disorder arises when significant changes in a person's genetic material lead to problems with de development and functioning of the body. Some genetic changes are not inherited from parents but occur as a new change. This is known as a de novo mutation. When a, gene, when a mutation occurs, it may affect all or part of a gene and can result in abnormal function leading to disease. A genetic test is a medical test that looks for changes in, chain in a person's genetic material, which, is, which are also known as variants or mutations. These genetic changes may ex help to explain why a person's health has, um, is problematic. Genetic testing can be performed on blood or saliva 
Other tissue types may also be used. As there are many types of genetic tests, which test is appropriate depends on the individual's medical and family history, what condition is being tested for, and the purpose of testing. Single gene test looks for changes in only one gene. It is done when the doctor believes that a patient has symptoms of a specific condition or syndrome, or when there is a known variant in the family. A panel genetic test looks for changes in many genes in one test. This panel are usually grouped in categories based on different kinds of medical co concerns such as low muscle tone, short stature, or epilepsy. Panels can also be grouped into genes that are as all associated with a higher risk of developing certain kinds of cancer like breast or colorectal cancer. Finally, there are also large-scale genetic tests. The most complete is whole genome sequencing which examines the complete DNA sequence of a patient's genome. Um, these are ordered by doctors for patients with complex medical histories. There are three possible outcomes of a genetic test. A positive outcome is self-explanatory. A known pathogenic variant is identified. In a negative result, no known pathogenic variant is identified. However, a negative result is not always good news. The patient has symptoms and took a genetic test to resolve a diagnostic question. Patients may not feel relieved upon receiving a negative result because it is uninformative and inconclusive. A negative test merely means that they do not have the variant tested for, but it does not answer the question, what disease is causing this patient's symptoms? A negative test means an inability to pursue further genetic diagnosis among family and the possibility that the a genetic disease runs in the family has not been eliminated. The final possibility is a VUS or a variant of unknown significance. It means that a variant is identified but we do not know if these variants are the reasons for the patient's condition. A VUS creates challenges for doctors in recommending appropriate management of their patient's condition. As we learn more, this VUS may be updated over time to pathogenic or non-pathogenic. While there are thousands of genetic tests available, it may not be helpful to undertake a genetic test simply because it is available. Generally, it is worth testing for conditions that have severe health consequences are medically, are medically actionable and highly penetrant. Hereditary conditions fall on a spectrum of severity from the relatively benign to the potentially fatal. Consider long QT syndrome, which can cause fast chaotic heartbeats. Untreated, 22% of patients die within a year of their first fainting episode. With proper treatment, mortality reduces to 1% over a 15-year follow-up. Clearly, it would be highly beneficial to identify patients who are at risk of long QT. Severity alone is not a sufficient condition to recommend testing. Consider Huntington's disease, which is a rare neurological disorder that typically results in death within 15 to 20 years of symptom onset. Currently, no curative or ameliorative treatments exist for HD and it is not considered actionable due to the limited clinical management options available. Should one test for HD? Testing of an unactionable disease confers little medical benefit and could result in harms or are incurred from increased anxiety, stigmatization, or discrimination. However, others will argue that knowledge of the condition could help affected patients with planning decisions, including reproductive choices. Ultimately, the utility of genetic testing for non-actionable diseases depends on individual values and circumstances. Finally, there is the issue of penetrance, which refers to the proportion of people with a particular genetic variant who exhibit symptoms of the genetic condition. While two siblings may inherit the same genetic variant, one may develop the condition, but the other does not. This is known as incomplete penetrance. Even if the condition does develop, it is not known when symptoms may appear or how severe the disease will be expressed. 
A variant can manifest with widely different severities in different members of the same family. Most diseases, particularly complex multi-gene diseases, have a range of penetrance that reflects complex interactions of environmental and genetic factors. An important factor to consider is the purpose of testing. In a symptomatic individual, genetic testing may be used to confirm or rule out a diagnosis. The results can also be used to determine the best approach to a patient's medical care, monitor prognosis of a disease, or their response to treatment. For example, if a patient was diagnosed with cancer at a young age, that is before age 50, or if they were diagnosed with more than one primary cancer or a rare cancer, their doctor might suspect a hereditary cancer syndrome. In such cases, testing is important because cancers that arise from a hereditary predisposition are usually managed differently from those that are non-hereditary or sporadic. For asymptomatic individuals with a family history of a condition, genetic testing can be used to learn whether they carry the variant before they develop symptoms. This is known as predictive testing. Genetic testing can also be used for reproductive planning. This is a complex issue and will not be covered in any depth here. Genetic testing in this context was once recommended only for couples with a relevant family history, which includes a previous child with a genetic condition. As tests become more accurate and less costly, Genetic testing or screening is increasingly provided to all persons who are considered having a child. Of course, one can have personal reasons for testing. Generally though, a doctor will not recommend testing just because an individual wants to know, because of the risk involved. The next slide will go over the reasons against testing. At this point, it is worth pointing out the differences between direct-to-consumer or DTC tests, and clinical genetic tests. DTT, DTC tests do not need to be recommended by a doctor. They are usually purchased by healthy individuals who are curious about their risk for developing certain conditions or their ancestry. DTC test results can be used to make decisions about lifestyle choices or provide topics to discuss with the doctor, but they should not be used alone to make decisions about diagnosis or medical care. As genetic tests are ordered by doctors for a specific medical reason, sometimes a genetic test is not necessary. For example, if a patient has no family history of the condition, or if the results of the genetic test will make no change to their medical care, the doctor might think it is not relevant or appropriate for the patient. Bear in mind that genetic testing can only provide limited information about the condition. If the individual is asymptomatic, for example, a positive test result only shows that the individual is a carrier of the variant, but it cannot determine if and when the person will develop symptoms, how severe the symptoms will be, or how the condition will progress with time. Sometimes, even if a genetic test is recommended by the doctor, Patients may be hesitant to take the test. The physical risk of most genetic tests are minimal. Instead, people may feel more concerned about the emotional, social, or financial consequences of the test results. They may feel depressed, anxious, or angry about the results. The results can also create social issues. Specifically, the results can affect the patient's relationships. The familial implications of genetic test results will be covered in the next video. Patients may be deterred as well by the cost of testing, and they may not see the point of testing if they are already being treated for their symptoms. Individual, asymptomatic individuals may not feel the need for testing if they are healthy. They may feel apprehensive about follow-up interventions should they test positive. For example, if individuals test positive for Lynch syndrome, which results in a higher risk of various cancers, especially colon cancer, they will be advised to go for regular colonoscopies. Patients may also feel worried about the possibility of genetic discrimination in insurance or employment. Genetic discrimination is the unequal treatment of an individual based on actual or perceived genetic characteristics. 
There is currently no law in Singapore that explicitly protects an individual from genetic discrimination. But genetic discrimination is safeguarded to an extent by the Personal Data Protection Act and professional ethical guidelines. Members of the Life Insurance Association of Singapore do not require applicants to undergo genetic testing to obtain insurance uh, coverage. However, applicants who are already aware of relevant genetic test results must disclose this information to their insurer. A moratorium between the Singapore Ministry of Health and the Life Insurance Association of Singapore was introduced in 2021 to prohibit the use of individuals, individuals' genetic test results in insurance underwriting if the genetic test was conducted in the context of biomedical research. This prohibition applies for all types of predictive testing for health insurance, but is limited to Huntington's disease and breast cancer for non-health insurance. Thank you.